We're hanging out with a rock star today. Kevin is actually from Jones County, but he has been a Grammy-nominated recording producer in Nashville for years now. I got in the music business to make rock and roll records, and I have worked on rock and pop and country and everything else. But in the last couple of years, I've been coming back down to Laurel to work on projects with several different artists and bands, and I still am. So I've been back here a lot lately. What we're talking about doing today is, you know, kind of like a writer's retreat, somewhere where he can come, work on music, spend time with family, get back to his roots, and then go, go back, back to, to Nashville. Nashville. We're gonna look at his dad's cabin, that he really, and I get like, he really wants to save it. Tell us about who built it. It was a friend. It was a friend of my dad's. His name was Bobby Webb. So there. we'll call it the Webb House. Yeah. This is the I Webb like House. It. Big burly woodsman, uh, did a lot of woodworking. Sounds you know. like a good guy. Yeah. Really handsome. I like him. I know this place is in really rough shape, but the memories I have inside of it and just how much my dad loved it, that itself makes me want to try to save it. It's an opportunity, and I understand that, but it also could be an opportunity that you have to let go of if it is just too far gone. So you got a thousand square feet, one bedroom, one bath. But it's free. Yeah, that's right. We're you starting have inherited at zero. It. Well, it's in rough shape. Yes. It's pretty, pretty I mean, bad. Uh, it, it is inhabited. Uh, Ricky lives in there. He's a buzzard and he's taken up residence. And I don't know what the rules are with buzzards. Does he have ownership at this point? Are we going to have to evict him? He's not very friendly though. I wouldn't recommend no. trying to make friends or anything. No, I've been trying no. to run him off. But you know what? I, I get why you want to save the cabin. I think it's special too. It needs a ton of work. The other contractors you met with were not lying. He's talked to a lot of other contractors who have kind of... Said, don't do this. This place has always been really dark. Super dark. dark. Yeah. And it's a few things working against us. We don't have enough windows. Yeah. We don't have a light that works. Mm -hmm. And we've got this wood that's just eating all the light. But you know what? I really love this cabin. I think it's got a lot going for it. One of my favorite things has always been this bar. Yeah. And there's just enough space to get around and do everything. But I've always loved the, the countertop there. So okay. I don't know if they, can be, if they can be saved or if they can be refinished. I had thought new countertops in the kitchen, but let me rethink it because if you like those, then we'll use these. So we're not gonna look at Ricky's house. No need, Kevin's seen it, he's familiar. Okay. The bathroom is very rustic. It's a good bathroom though, right? I, yeah, it could be. It's big. It, it, it is. is big and it's, it's not in terrible shape. The bedroom changes a little bit more though. I think everything needs to be sheetrocked. Yeah, probably. So $23,000 for the bedroom and bathroom. The house overall is a thousand square feet. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a one bedroom, one bath. All total, $90,000. You and I are both very sentimental people, but I really think that this next option is a good, I mean, he really does need to consider this. I mean, just walking up to it, yeah, it's pretty I, solid. Yeah, I like the porch. I like a lot about this house. So this is the night house, okay? okay. Maddie and Chester Knight built this house. Okay. They built this one because they had another house here that was completely wiped out by a tornado in the oh, 1920s. Wow. wow. And that obviously left a pretty strong mark because this house is all concrete block with okay. a brick veneer. It's 1,300 square feet. It's two bedrooms, one bath, plus a bonus room. Okay. And they've got it listed for 60,000, but I really think you could get it for 50. I think that just paint in here and the new mm -hmm. flooring throughout the house mm -hmm. and um, update the fireplace around the fire box, like yeah. with some tile. Yeah, but yeah. But that's kind of it in this room. Here's what I think. It would be a booger, but I want to take this wall down okay. so that this becomes part of the kitchen. Okay. Move this hood vent, keep it though, and use it again over here against mm -hmm. this wall beside that door opening okay. where your oven would be. And I want to take this drain board sink, move it in here under that window with okay. countertops that would come to this door, okay. and then take okay. the refrigerator, build it into cabinets over here, and this could be your little breakfast room in the window. Oh, too. yeah, that'd be cute. A table yeah. with some chairs. Oh, it's in a whole other guest room. This is all bonus. Right, like, wow. This yeah. house just keeps, just keeps going. $50,000 is what we really think that this house is worth, what you could get it for. Yeah. And then $45,000 for the renovation, so you'd be at $95,000, which, yeah. It's only 5,000 more which than is, your dad's. It's pretty close to the same thing, yeah. a lot more to it. So what are you thinking? I'm thinking that I love this place, 
but it's just not my dad's place. I get that. And I really just like have to do something with it. Like it's gonna, it's gonna just get worse and fall down. I think that if your heart's not in this house, then why do it? If cost doesn't matter, it's saving part of your family's history that matters, mm -hmm. let's do the cabin. Okay. Don't do this, let's do the cabin. Kevin is gonna do the cabin. We are so excited about it. I mean, we checked out the cabin, and so, you know, we, we know that the roof has been leaking for a very long time, and we know that there is some visible damage and also some invisible damage, and we won't really know what we're getting into until we get into it. It's gonna have its challenges, but it's gonna be stunning when it's done. Ricky has left the building. He didn't like all the noise we were making, and so he had to go. So the temporary walls here, we can pull down more? Yes, that way we can actually expose and just see how intensive the damage is. I mean, there's holes everywhere. Little holes, big holes. I mean, I'm looking at sunshine. And I really don't even know the extent of it yet, because we just got the shingles taken. Yeah. That's Shingle. what you can uh, see. That's what we can see as right. of right now. But it's actually a little worse back here. Worse? Yes. In the bedroom? Yes. Ugh. Oh, gross. So the corner is gone. There's no way to just patch it. No, that's extensive. It, extensive, for sure. The roof looks like it's made out of a bed sheet. That's not a good thing. Is it like a good bed sheet, though? Is it, you know, I mean, like, what thread count are we talking here? It's about a 400 thread count bed sheet. Oh, OK. Keeping the rain out of that house. Yeah. Honestly, we've made a lot of progress, but it feels like we keep taking one step forward and then two steps back. The deeper we get into Kevin's house and the more walls and ceilings that we take down, the worse it gets. We may have to change our design plan completely. Originally, when we first looked at the cabin, we came up with the idea of vaulting the ceiling. It was gonna be too much money. However, at this point, the cabin is in such bad shape and the way that it was built was incorrect Vaulting the ceiling is the cheapest option. Since we discovered this, we've also discovered the floor in the bedroom. All those joists was rotten, and we exposed even more rot over here. The whole room is rotten. Basically, everything in there is rotten. Seals, joists. Yeah. Yeah. And now we're going to have to come back in and pretty much rebuild that whole exterior wall. Woo! Is it in? It's, it's in. in. Come on in. So this house is safe now. We're good to go. Let's proceed. We're structurally sound. We're structurally sound. Now that this house is finally safe and watertight and ricky free, I think we can focus on making it a proper home for Kevin. I'm trying to dig into him and his personality and to think of how we apply that to this very rough cabin to make it something really special. If you think of an old big stone in the woods that's covered in moss, that's my color palette. I can see the light in the midnight hour. Burning like the sun as the planes went high. We are covering the gables from our newly vaulted ceiling with wood that we salvaged from inside the house. And it looks really, really good. But even better is that it smells really good. It smells pine sappy. Uh huh, because we've been cutting this stuff. This looks so good. Yeah, I mean, that right there looks incredible. Uh huh. You would think it was always this way. This cabin has been through a journey. It's blossomed. No longer a murder house. Yeah, this was like a cesspool of filth. And now, you know. It's a safe pool. You, yeah. Kevin does have sentimental attachment to this house, and I want to be sensitive to that. The countertops, he has always liked them. If we can save them, we need to save them. Those are the things that make a home a home. It's not how pretty it is, it's how you feel when you're there. And he feels connected to his dad in this visceral way. And those are the small things that will always make him think of his dad in the way it used to be. Wow. This suddenly looks very intentional, like yes. mixing in the dark and the light. Yep in an evenly spaced sort of way. I'm in the clear coat only camp. I don't want to stain so. it. I think it's yes. cool. We've added new doors to the existing cabinets. We painted it all mossy green from floor to ceiling. We are. There. I think that Kevin is going to be so happy that he can finally just have this off his plate. 
There's no way he has an idea of how much better it is. Because I, every time I show up, I'm like, holy cow, this is... This is going to be a special day for him. All right, so your dad's cabin was absolutely horrible. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It was terrible. But welcome to the Edlin cabin. <laughs> wow. I can't believe how different it is. Yeah. This yeah. is amazing. Do you recall it ever being this... Clean. It's never been this and clean. nice. It's never been this nice. Yeah. And this is as nice as it has ever been. I believe that. This is amazing. I love the colors. Okay. It works with the whole scene back here. Yeah. That's fantastic. I love the the bigger windows. It's going to let in so much more light. Oh, and the deck looks great. That's the old deck. We didn't that, replace that it. That is wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I cannot believe it. Isn't this wild? Wow. Oh my goodness. It's so bright in here and, and airy. And it a good deep breath. It smells so good in here. I know. Yes. <laughs> the fireplace was a real special area. We pretty much replaced the entire wall, studs and everything from uh -huh. window okay. to window. So this was actually sort of a blessing in disguise because that's how we ended up with this. You have a vaulted ceiling! The, I know, I love it. I absolutely love it. My goodness, as I live and breathe, this is everything that I could have ever imagined that this could be. So these are the natural colors of the wood, no stain or anything like that. I mean, this looks like a mixed species butcher block. Yes, yeah. yes. Oh my, I, mm, I can't even like believe it. I love everything about it. Yeah, and I love the shower and the whole bath and everything. Like the vanity and the shower are both a little bit modern. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I think that makes sense because if you had like a clawfoot bathtub in here with these super rustic walls, it would have been a totally different vibe. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But this works. It does. Yeah.